right, well, I guess we're going to go ahead and start this right off the bat with this is my first YouTube video. What's going on, everybody? So, I'm asked quite often, how do you retexture something for Daisy? And today I'm going to show everybody the process and everything involved and what you need to install to retexture something, apply the texture to said object, and set up a config for it as well as test it in offline mode on a default ChernRS setup so that you'll know whether or not it's working or not if somebody was to say load it into their own server. At the same point I will also go over how to set up a key for it and if you were to publish it on the workshop after that any anybody could use it at that point it's a public mod so let's go ahead and just get this started. Um, for the start, you're going to want to visit the links in the description below. I will have linked there a Google Drive for specific files. The hoodie PNG that you will have, because we are going to work with a default black hoodie from Daisy. Because this is going to be a simple retexture. This isn't going to be anything over the top. This is just going to be one item. Most every other item, if it's able to be retextured for the most part, is done about the same way. Um, there will just be other things you'll have to change along the way with it for it to work appropriately. Um, you're also going to need the second link which is an armaholic link for PBO Manager which is used to pack and unpack unencrypted or unbinarized unobfuscated PBOs the ones that aren't locked. So you're going to come down here and you're going to click the click to download PBO Manager and install it like any other application. Second one you're going to want is 7-zip. You're going to want, depending on your system, 64 or 32. I have 64, so download that and install it. After you've got both of those installed, go ahead and open up your files on your computer. And just leave that open open up Steam on your computer and go to your library. If you already have Daisy installed, you might need to install Daisy tools. So come up to Steam or games and tools. You're going to check the tools and you'll either have Daisy tools pop up for you. It might pop up in your uncategorized. I have mine set in favorites or you can simply search Daisy tools. Once you've got that installed, go ahead and run it. Once you've got Daisy, Daisy Tools running, you'll have this little box here. I'm not going to show everybody how to set everything up because there is a lot that goes into it. For this tutorial, we're going to be going over only what you need to do the process of retexturing a simple hoodie. Um, for starters, once you've got Daisy Tools open, first thing is text view. If you click it, this is what it'll come up with. <clears throat> Uh, there's nothing in it. This is just what you use to convert files from PNG to .paa. PNG is what you will use in Photoshop or your favorite editing software. PAA is what Daisy uses for reading the texture on and applying it to said object in game. So go ahead and exit out of that. And come over to DSUtils. Now in DSUtils, this is what you're going to use later to sign your .pbo. We haven't gone over it yet, but we'll get there. This is what you're going to use that will sign your file with a key for you to put it on the workshop if you so desire to for other people to use your texture packs. Okay, anyways, after looking at text view, go ahead and close DSUtils. We'll go back over that here in a little bit. but. Once you've got Daisy tools open, I did forget you will have to at least mount your P drive because you're going to want a default workstation for anything Daisy related, and that's what the P drive is for. So go ahead and come up to the settings in Daisy tools, and you will set up your path to your project drive as well as path to game directory. Uncheck the default because I don't personally like using the defaults unless that is, of course. 100% your default path, but with my computer configuration and everything that I do on it, I have changed some things. My path to the game directory is, however, default though. That is where my Daisy is installed. 
So for this part, we're just going to confirm that your daisy is installed to that location, unless you know it by heart. So go ahead and come open your Steam and right click on daisy and go to properties. Go to local files and browse local files. <clears throat> this will open up to your default daisy browsing directory, which you can then copy this or you can click on this bar here. And if that matches your path to game directory, then leave it as is and leave the default unchecked because that is default. If it is not default, simply highlight all of this, right click and copy, or if you know the shortcuts, highlight it, control copy, control C, come over to here, highlight it, control V to paste it. Now you're going to have to do the same thing to your project drive. If you um, if there isn't one already assigned or anything, <clears throat> but one should have already been default made when you installed Daisy Tools. So for this one, it's telling me that mine is in Z Users John Documents Daisy Projects. So if I come over to C Users John Documents Daisy Projects, it's already right here. So if this is default for you as well to yours and what it should be then you don't have to change anything if it's not well we're gonna need to find your daisy projects then so if I'm correct right click on daisy tools in steam local files browse local files nope this opens up the game library for steam okay so realistically either way if daisy tools installed you should be able to go to the same path local disk C users your name documents daisy projects should still be a file there if daisy tools installed properly um if it did then good if not well i'm not 100 percent sure on how to help you with your specific setup and all of your directories so that would be a video for a different day anyways continuing on with if everything was as it should be both of these should be unchecked, both of these should be assigned properly. <clears throat> Click apply. Some of the changes require a restart to the launcher. Do you want to restart Daisy Tools launcher now? Click yes. I'm going to click cancel because everything is already set up properly for me. If Daisy doesn't start or sorry, if the tools don't start up immediately after they restart, come back into Steam and restart it manually. Once you have it open again, Go to Tools, and you should have a Mount P Drive button here. If you click it, it should ask you something. Click Yes, and you should have, in your File Explorer, you should now have a P Drive somewhere here with your other drives on your computer. What it does is it automatically hooks into your game directory, or sorry, your project drive. It, it pulls from that generated file and makes its own directory for quick access. Um, anytime that you restart your computer or uh, your power goes out or anything like that, anything that has to do with your computer shutting down, you will have to probably remount your P drive in Daisy Tools. Sometimes you might have to remount it a couple of times for it to work properly. It depends on what you're doing, it depends on what error Daisy decides to throw at you or issue. Anyways. You've got Daisy Tools, you mounted your P drive, you've installed 7-Zip, you've installed Armaholic for PBO Manager at this point, not installed Armaholic, but you've gone to the website and installed all of that. Now, if you navigate to the first link for the Google Drive, you should be greeted with what's in this drive that you see here. Uh, if in your P drive you're going to want to Take these files and download them. Right click and download or click the download button if you see it elsewhere. Once you have both of them downloaded, come on you. I'm just going to skip ahead in this part.
Anyways, once you've got them both downloaded, I know it says that I've canceled mine here, but that's because I've already got it downloaded as I'm the one that had to upload it anyways. It's about, mm, it's probably a little over a gig, and it's because there are files that you will need to move out of that folder that are technically mods that are public mods on the workshop that I've included for testing in offline mode. Instead of making somebody sit there and try to figure out what's needed to test in offline mode, try to figure out what they need to install where, etc. I have provided all of the files and we're going to go through all of it together. So, if you've got these files downloaded and you're using Google Chrome, they should be sitting right here or if you click show all, they will be showing in your downloads. You will want your file explorer as well as your internet browser open together and you will take them both and you'll move them into your P drive just by dragging and dropping them from here into there just like that. Now because I've already got mine installed I will navigate over to it. Now you should be greeted with an offline mode file set dot 7z. Now you will right click that and it will give you the option to 7-zip and extract to offline mode file set. It will extract it and create its own folder. It might go down below it, it might put it just below everything else, but mine, because everything is already made, is sitting right here. Now take that picture, the hoodie underscore black underscore co dot png that you also have, and move it into the one that you just extracted. Realistically, at this point, you can also just delete this once it's extracted and you have the files. So now if you take that hoodie, black PNG, drag it up into, or down in this case, into the offline mode file set. I'm going to skip it because mine's already sitting there. And you should have these. Now if you take that and you move it into mods to move, take it and move it into uh, the, the at and symbol your custom mod name here move it into add-ons move it into your texture pack move it into tops move it into data yes this was the long route to go but it was the simple way to explain it instead of being more intricate having trying to teach somebody how to use shortcuts this is just for a quick example now you'll have your hoodie black co.png in the tops data folder. Now in the tops folder you will have noticed that there is a config file. If you open it up, you will have you will be greeted with oh wait, you can't open it up yet. You'll be greeted with your config file. You won't be able to open your config file yet. You'll have to go to the other link in the description in the video, which is for Visual Studio Code. Or you can use Notepad++ if you really want to. If you use Visual Studio Code, you'll be greeted with this web page. And you'll download it for Windows. Go through its installation, just the default, everything. No need to go excessive, don't install extra stuff, just get default Visual Studio Code. Once you have Visual Studio Code installed, in that file, you will right click on the config, go to properties, click the change button, and if you don't have Visual Studio Code here, click more apps, and look for it on your PC and direct it to its installation. Select it, click apply, click OK. Now double click it and it will open up to the provided file that I have left with all of you. Uh, yes, I know that this is going to get confusing really quick. So now you've got your Visual Studio Code open, you've got Daisy Tools open in the background, you've got your Folder Explorer open as well. You can exit out of the drive, you can exit out of any other websites that you've got open if you have already downloaded and installed everything else. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and close Steam as well. Now in here because we are just doing a default hoodie <clears throat> I have provided all of these files and they are just default this is just default file structure from Daisy itself. 
I'm not a scripter, I am not a coder, nor do I claim to be. This is everything that I have learned from other mod developers and other community members or from other mod work uh, and just looking through Daisy files just over my course of working with Daisy stuff. So in this file you will have what you see here uh, is kind of self-explanatory to a point. We will go over everything that you have to change. <clears throat> Uh, starting with the folder that you were in, not the actual config file itself, but you will just leave it open, or actually no, go ahead and close it because you're going to be moving it. In your file explorer that you have from everything that you installed, go ahead and come back out to your default location of everything else that you have for it. The Daisy community offline mode plus as well as the mods to move. <clears throat> now you remember what I said earlier about opening up Steam and going to Daisy, right click properties, go to its browse local files. You're going to want to do that again and then exit out of or minimize Steam. Now in here, yours might look different because I've already got a bunch of stuff installed in here. Um, yours might end up looking like this someday or even worse or yours if you're watching this and you already know how to do all of this I'm sure yours probably look similar or worse so in the mods to move folder you should have the that as well as your daisy directory open so you're going to take all of these and move them into your daisy directory I've already got these top four installed, so I'm only going to move the your custom mod name here. So just drag and drop it over to here. Or all of them in this case, highlight and move them all over here. Once you've got them all there, the top four you don't have to do anything with, but the your custom mod name here you will. So it has an and symbol because it's technically reading it as if it's on or it's reading the file name as if it was a mod on a server so you're going to leave the and symbol but you can change the mod name or this folder name to whatever you want so for this example i'm going to just change it to derps free texture set because <clears throat> this name for this file doesn't actually matter go ahead and press enter and go ahead and go into it you should be greeted with an add-ons folder. Go into the add-ons, you'll be greeted with your texture pack. If you really want to leave this named your texture pack, you can, or you can change it as well. Do not set it to the same name as the original mod. You want it set to something else. So for this, we're just going to set it to derps texture, or T-E-X, uh, derps textures. Enter, enter. Now I'm inside of Derp's Textures folder. You should have a Tops folder here. This is because it's just one top that's being made. If you were to add more content such as pants or weapons or anything else that's retextured, I would recommend you make another folder and label it what it is. Put everything for one specific type of item within its folder. Keep everything labeled and categorized nicely. Go into the tops folder, you'll have your data and your config folder. Now, these files are in their right location because this is where you will be testing them out of. So, in the data folder, you'll have your hoodie underscore black under co dot png. If you double click on it, or actually I have Photoshop installed, so if I double click on it, it will open it in Photoshop. At this point, Yes, Photoshop is a paid product. I am not sponsored by Photoshop, but it is my personal preference for simple retexturing. Uh, if you want to use Microsoft Paint or your own favorite image editing software, you can by any means. I'm just going to use Photoshop for the sake of this tutorial because it's what I have, it's what I know how to use, and it's my personal preference. There's a lot you can do with Photoshop, and I highly recommend it because you can make templates and save those templates for, for later's use, which is amazing. It just makes it simple and quick for retexturing later down the road. 
Um, for me, I'm going to go ahead and double click this. And yes, I know you saw something else that I was working on, but that's okay. So you should be greeted with your texture. This is just a flat texture because it wraps around the model in game how it's supposed to. Everything is UV mapped and sits appropriately on the model according to what's laying out here and where it pulls from through UV mapping. So the gray, the flat gray here is the background. This is data that's not on the model itself in game. This is the color that's not actually seen in game. This is just a flat background. So for this example, because I already know what I'm doing with Photoshop to a point, I'm going to come over to the magic wand tool, right click magic wand, and okay I need to turn the tolerance down, I'm going to turn it down to, I don't know, let's turn it down to like 15, I'm going to select, ooh and it's still a bit too high, let's come down to 10, deselect, nope still a bit too high, let's bring it down to 8, still a bit too high, let's bring it down to 5, there we go. I brought it down to 5 and I selected this location here and it selected all of the gray and that's it. Now if I hold shift and I come over here because it didn't select it because it's separated by the edges of the texture, hold shift and click on another part of the gray to select the other portion and it will highlight that part. Right click, layer via copy, now it will have layered it over here you'll see a layer 2. If you press the little eye icon and look at the photo you won't notice anything different because you didn't cut it because it's not recommended to cut it because if you cut it there's a chance that it will offset it ever so slightly you'll have to reposition it ever so slightly and sometimes it will decide to put some uh, opacity on the edge between the layers and that's not what you want so you just want to layer it via copy it will put it above the original layer. This is the background, so realistically this would have to stay the top layer. This stays above everything else, and we're going to relabel it background. Uh, you can do that by right-clicking it, and uh, never mind, I don't see a re uh, rename. This is a little tricky, but what I do is I just left-click on it once, and then I left-click on it again, like a second later, until it lets me relabel it. Other than that, I really don't know how to rename it. I don't really mess with it too much. Kind of fiddle. You gotta fiddle with it a little bit. Um, anyway, select layer 1 and because it's sitting below the background, anything that you put on layer 1, let's say you take a default image and for example we'll actually go ahead and do that. Let's just take, let me pull up a random asset that I use sometimes. Let's just use this for example. Perfect. So I pulled in this daisy. It's supposed to be a PNG but you see how it's got a white background on it? Uh, all I did was drag and drop that from another file explorer location such as this into here. Just drag and drop the uh, image or whatever it is. JPEG, PNG, whatever you want. I'm going to change the tolerance back on the magic wand to 30 and I'm going to select, hold shift and select the areas that I don't want. Now that I have that, if you hold alt and zoom in, you can get a better look at it. I'm going to select all of this in here because I don't want any of that white or gray. So if uh, you also might have to re the layer to allow you to edit the layer how you want. And if you press delete or right click and um, cut, I think, you can also cut it that way. Or control X, I think, as well. Now you should be left with whatever you didn't cut, or if you're even doing this part. So whatever you cut you can put it wherever you want and like I was saying anything that you put on this layer in between the background and layer one will come up in between the background and layer one so if you were to say example control T and select it and move it around and if you were to accidentally put it under the gray or in the background it wouldn't show up in the gray at all 
because the background is covering it how it should. But just for the sake of this daisy tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and use this just for an example. I'm going to put this right here, and because it's a tutorial, it's a daisy tutorial, I'm just going to use a daisy logo. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to do a little bit to the image just for tutorial and quickness sake. I'm going to change the color of the logo to red, and I'm going to change the hoodie color to black. No outer glow, color glow, color overlay of solid black. Okay. Um, now, yeah, sure, it may not look the greatest, and that's just part of it. Uh, unless you're going to put hours and hours or a lot of time into retexturing something, this is for the most part what it comes down to. If I wanted to add more onto it to make it look better, I could. For example, let's just go ahead and do this real quick and delete, take this blending, color overlay, no I'm sorry, cancel, disable color overlay, let's go to an outer glow of dark red, let's give it a little bit more spread, take this drag this layer onto here. Now I'm going to layer it where I want it. And because you're putting it in between the layer of the background and the actual hoodie itself, it's going to show up below the background as it should. Now realistically I'm skipping ahead with all of this and doing this on my own because if you're using your own photo editing software, steps and procedures, can, uh, hotkeys, etc. may not be the same. If you know how to use Photoshop, cool. If not, I am not making a tutorial on Photoshop specifically, so if you want to know how to do that, I recommend going and checking out a different video. Um, I'm going to give the daisy logo its own outer glow to separate it from the actual like uh, digital pattern if you will here I'm going to give this like a yeah let's give it a white a white glow a thin white glow like that might not look too bad now I'm gonna go ahead and call this good for the tutorial it didn't take too long control shift s and I'm going to relabel this hoodie um, tutorial hoodie underscore or sorry tutorial hoodie dot PSD I'm gonna press enter and it should have saved only it takes a second for most things some things take a lot longer to save um, I didn't mean to deselect that now I'm going to click the drop down and save it as a PNG as well in the same location. Click OK. Now once you have it saved, you should be at this point. You can close whatever editing software you want. And we're going to go ahead and get into the testing of it. Um, after you've saved it as a PNG, go ahead and open up your files where you've got that saved. So that would be in your daisy game directory let me go ahead and navigate back over there that would be I named mine derps retexture set now derps retexture set add-ons derps textures tops and if you go into the data folder again you should have these three files or if you're using Photoshop you'll have these three files the PSD you're not going to want to keep in this location because you want to save it elsewhere as you if you ever want to edit it or come back to it or use the template as something else you can just open that up turn some stuff off change some other stuff or edit it how you want it 
there's no need to set one up from default like you did originally. So save that to a new folder elsewhere, wherever you want, a text string folder, set yourself one up. I've got one set up that categorizes things between tops, pants, guns, etc. As well as that's where I also keep a lot of my PNGs or assets for text string, such as the what you saw, the, the digital and the DAISY logo. So for this tutorial, because I don't need those, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight both of these, hold control and select the original hoodie, not the one that you did. So both of these two should be highlighted and just delete them. You'll be left with this in your data folder. Now you need to convert the PNG to a .paa. So in your DAISY tools, go ahead and open up text view. In the gray box, simply drag the file that you made, the PNG, into the gray square. It will open it up like this where with your mouse scroll you can scroll in and out to look at it. Now anywhere in here, it doesn't matter where, Control shift s with your keyboard or you can file save as. You don't need to change anything here other than change the PNG to a .paa and press save. Now if you hold your cursor over the actual image itself, if your cursor is spinning, that means it's saving. Let it finish before you try to do anything, otherwise it may not save properly. After that, simply close it. Now you don't need the PNG anymore, so you can technically just delete it, because it's still saved here. If you double click on this, it might not open up properly, as I have mine set to automatically open up to .paas, or for text view to for PAAs to open up with text view, sorry. Um, if you want to do that, you can right click on it and go to properties and go to opens with and you'll change it and you would have to then direct it to your DAISY tools and your text view application. I'm not going to go through that, but that's what you would have to do. So now if you come back up here and you go up to here, you should be at DAISY. You'll have your derps or well, mine derps texture set, add-ons, derps textures. So this piece right here inside of the add-ons folder, not the one with the and symbol, but the one inside of the add-ons folder, this is your PBO itself. So you need to take the name of this, derps textures, inside of tops, config, open up the config file, the directory or the path has to match properly as well as the name of the hoodie has to match properly. So for the sake of this tutorial, for quickness sake, the PBO name for mine is Derps Textures. That's the one sitting inside of the add-ons folder. So I need to put that name here, Derps Textures. And because a hoodie takes three hidden selection textures, to apply, you have to do it to the other two as well. So it'll have three lines that look exactly the same all the way down. The name of it, this part, tops data your hoodie.paa, tops and data's correct because that's within the folder derps textures. Your hoodie.paa is not correct because that's not what I labeled it before. So in the folder, I labeled it tutorial hoodie. So I'm gonna take that name and apply it right there as well should be 100% the same if there's if it's capitalized anywhere it's all case sensitive I recommend following the exact same structure layout now your hidden selection textures the path should be correct if you just did all of that properly the name of this is the PBO that's going to be packed and then within the PBO, it has tops, data, tutorial, hoodie. So if I come back over here, add-ons, this is technically going to be the PBO, tops, data, tutorial, hoodie, dot PAA. Perfect. It's exactly how it should be. <clears throat> now, for the class up here at the top, class config patches is fine. Class your texture pack tops, this needs to change. So you need to change this to realistically something else that you want. It can't be the name of the mod. It should not be the name of the PBO. So for this, we're just going to name it Derps Texture Tops. And that's what I would use for the class name here. Because it's Derps Textures, 
it's within the derps textures pbo but it's within its own tops folder so that's what i'm labeling it derps texture tops if i was to make a pants folder and have a config file in there for the pants i would label that one class derps texture pants now units you don't have to add anything into weapons you don't have to add anything into required version leave 0.1 and required add-ons because this is a default daisy item you only have to have it have dz underscore data if you were to say if you were to retexture say a modded weapon or a modded piece of clothing or gear that is not your mod or that you have permission to edit that you can't repack but you're still allowed to retexture realistically this required add-ons would have to have another file in required add-ons so let's say for example if you were to retexture a mass mini items gun it would have to have the class of the weapon file so it could pull the data properly and that the weapons or items wouldn't despawn if they were loaded into a server because without the required add-ons sure they might load up properly but they'll despawn randomly on server restarts or just at will because they aren't pulling the data properly for persistence and just for the data of the weapon or the entity at all so for mass as many items just as an example we're not going to use this but it's mass guns which then would also have different data down here but we're not doing anything with modified data or altered daisy content this is just purely vanilla stuff so you now have derps texture tops or well in my case derps tex texture tops now down here the class config vehicles class hoodie underscore color base that's because the data is being pulled from a default daisy item so it has to have a class here which is the hoodie col the hoodie color base so now below that is the actual item itself custom hoodie don't use spaces in class names means exactly that if you're putting a class name never use a space so for this tutorial we're going to change that to mm, derps text uh sorry derps hoodie underscore test now in game for server owners or hosts that is what you would then use to put in your types xml or your trader config or whatever other config you're using that is the class name that would go in the files for your server for the item to spawn properly where you want it etc uh, the hoodie color base is what it pulls from you have to leave that there otherwise it won't pull it properly the display name and description short are exactly what they are uh, you can use spaces in these because that's the display name and the description they are in quotes so you can use spaces properly um, put the display name to whatever you want I do recommend something short so for this we're going to use derps test hoodie for the description put it to whatever you want or you can triple click and delete the line entirely for this tutorial I'm going to delete the line because I don't particularly need it and there are some other things that you can put below the display name or below the hidden textures like down here but still within the actual class name of the item there's a lot of other data that you could technically have here but we're not going to get into any of that because this is just a texture that's it this isn't modifying any daisy content other than a texture um, it is fairly simple though all you would have to do is copy and paste the other entries of data that can go there and alter them to your will such as uh, increased hotbar space or increased item inventory space or hell you can even change the size of the item itself um, <clears throat> you can even get down to the weather effects the jackets and or clothing take etc or how much uh, absorption and like uh, insulation etc so anyways now that we're done with the config file at least at this point if you've changed the name of the item the display name of the item the pass of the items texture that it applies as well as the class here you should be good to go in the uh, config file itself 
Now, because it's already where it should be and save, uh, the, the file's already where it should be, you can save it, control S, and then exit out of it. At this point, you should have just about everything you need to test ready to go, but you're not done yet. So in the original file that you put in your P drive, the offline mode file set files, there is another file, daisy community offline mode dot Trinaris plus. If you've got two folders open, like I think you should, like I do, one of them should be in your P drive, the other one should be in your daisy directory in the files that you've been working on. If you click on daisy at the top here, you should be in your root daisy directory and you should have somewhere in here a missions folder. You're going to take from your P drive the one that was provided and drag it into there and you should be met with the files for what look like a server files but these are just going to be used for offline mode. Now if you just move that you've already moved everything out of your P drive and you can now close that file directly in your daisy offline mode file set that you just moved in that folder you'll have a daisy community offline mode dot bat file you'll right click on it and edit with notepad or visual studio code whatever your personal preference is uh... edit ah uh, mine's already open Okay. Now, just for quick quickness, I'm just going to edit mine with uh, Notepad++ because I've already got it open and it's quick. So, this is everything. This is what yours should look like exactly because this is the one that I have provided. So, actually no, this is not the one that I have provided. I'm so sorry, hang on. I think I added a note in there. Ah, I did. Okay. In the one that I have provided for you all, this is what you'll be met with. You should have the CD key X game library Steam Steam Apps Common Daisy. Change this to your Daisy directory path and delete this message. Means exactly that. So you're gonna want to open up your Daisy and right click on or sorry, open up Steam and right click on Daisy. Go to properties, local files, browse local files. You'll have this directory copy this directory right here exit out of that click on close come back into the file highlight this and paste it there and then delete this message right here you should be left with CD is your path here to your daisy now other than that the only thing that you have to change here for it for you to test this appropriately is the your custom mod name here remember what I said before about the and symbol about this one so you're going to go into your daisy folder and I changed mine to and derp or at derps retexture set so now I'm gonna copy that with or without the little and symbol and you're going to replace it here and because I copied it with it I'm going to paste it with it so it should be perfectly set as yours is. The files, or sorry, the uh, name should match for case sensitivity as well. Now control S. Now you can close this. Now I know I have a couple of extra things open here. Let me minimize and clean this up. This is my P drive, which I don't need anymore because that's the one that I was just showing you all for what I provided. Now in your DAISY directory, you should be inside of your daisy community offline mode dot bat the one that you just edited and saved with those little edits you should now be able to um, actually let me make sure that I've just done mine because this is the one that I'm actually going to use for a live demonstration not the one that I've just provided save exit all right, now mine is set for what I just did to show everyone for this tutorial. So double click on it and yours should 
load up. It will start loading up Daisy in offline mode, but this is just to test the file that you made, the texture that you made for this specific item. This isn't this uh, this is not a live server. This is just for demonstration. Daisy offline mode is also extremely buggy. Depending on what you're doing, you may experience different issues, different bugs, different errors. Um, but for this tutorial, because all we did was a simple retexture of a hoodie with everything that you did, if you followed the instructions to a T, you should be good to go with whatever file you just did for this one hoodie texture. Once mine loads, I will try to see if I can even get a picture of it properly with how I have my monitor configured. It's only capturing half of my screen, so I don't know if this is going to capture properly. So bear with me for a minute, y'all. Now, once you're loaded up in game, I'm not sure what all my screen or my uh, what all this can, is uh, capturing. Okay, well, I mean, it's it's capturing enough, I guess. Okay, well, anyways, once you've got Daisy open from offline mode, you should be greeted with your default character wearing what you're wearing. Um, if you press Y. It'll open up a menu on the right hand side of your screen. I can't actually show you mine for how mine is configured, but if you click the top button, OB is object builder or items and objects. Um, hold your cursor over the search and search up whatever you labeled yours. So what did I label mine? Wasn't it just dirt putty? Oh wait, um, I'm sorry y'all, we forgot to pack it so it's not going to show up properly yet. This is a common issue, so go ahead and close your game. Yes, I know you're going to have to load it up a second time, but this is something that you definitely need to remember. Because this is something that even I forget all the time. Go ahead and close out of the game completely. Up here, go back here at DayZ folder and inside of the mod that you made or the and derps texture set the one that I did go into the add-ons folder now if you installed PBL manager earlier you should be able to do this without an issue right click on it PBL manager pack into derps texture dot PBO okay now right click and delete the file itself oh wait I can't because it's currently open in other stuff like what I don't know, probably Photoshop or whatever your uh, photo editing software is. Or any other folders that are also linked to it. Now, if I close all of that, right click it again and delete it. Because I closed everything that was associated with it. Now, it's not actually locked yet. There's no key bound to it, but we can go back into the missions and relaunch. I'm just going to skip this loading part because I explained everything last time.
All right, once you're back in game, go ahead and put your character into third person if you really want to. Uh, press Y and click on OB again. And hold your cursor over the search button. Search up whatever you labeled it. Derps hoodie underscore test is the very first one that popped up for me. So when you search, you can left click on the item that you made once and then click on the ground button or inventory button or cursor button. If you do it at cursor, it's going to go where you're looking, so I don't recommend it. So just click ground once, and if you press escape, it will close that menu, and you can then press tab, and you'll see your hoodie. You can put it in your hand. It's now a physical item. It is now what it is. Now, if you put it on, uh, let's just drop this stuff so we can get a better look at it. This is what I just made. Now if you want to get a better look of it in offline mode if you've never used it before, if you press insert once, it will put you at, oh, if you press insert, it will put you in this mode where you can look around and everything. If you WASD, it will probably shoot you really, really fast in one direction. If you scroll down on your mouse, it will slow and, or sorry, it will increase and decrease the speed of your movement while you are in this mode. This is the aerial or free cam view. Wherever you are looking at, the little white cursor in the middle of your screen, if you press insert again, that is where your character will teleport to. Just for a quick tutorial on that. So now in third person, or sorry, free cam, looking around my character, if I scroll down to turn down the sensitivity, you can get a full 360 of your character in the light, however you want. Take pictures, etc. So this is it. This is the tutorial hoodie that I just made, and I will probably actually apply this to our server because it doesn't look too terrible. Um, but yeah, that, that about sums up testing it. You, If you're at this point and you can see your texture, it if it's not white, that means that you applied the texture properly. Um, if it's white if it's just a solid white hoodie that means that your texture is not applied properly somewhere in the path directories either the config or somewhere somewhere along the way one of the paths isn't messed up so go back over the tutorial and make sure you did all of the paths correctly um, I'm gonna go ahead and exit and we will go ahead and wrap up the video with the last few steps of what you have to do Alright, now at this point you've tested it, you've made it, it works, etc. In the folder here that you have, you can go ahead and leave that file where it's at if you ever decide to use it in the future. Um, go back to your DAISY directory. Whew, excuse me. Um, go ahead and take the texture set that you made or whatever the mod name is that you created and highlight it, left click on it once. Control C. Now on the left hand side you should still have your P drive because if you've still got Daisy tools and you haven't restarted your computer or anything you should still have your P drive. Now you're going to go ahead and come over here and paste it in here. Control V to paste it. Now I'm going to get rid of the and symbol because that is automatically generated when the mods are put onto the workshop and applied to a server. It automatically puts that and symbol there when it's included onto a server. So within here, this is the mod itself. If I go into it and come back out of it, it might recategorize or reorganize whatever you've got in your P drive. Coming in here, coming into add-ons, all that's in here is the PBO. Now to make it a public mod, if you want to that is, it has to have a key folder in next to the add-ons folder. So now you're gonna make a keys folder and there's nothing in it as well as your PBO is not signed so in daisy tools go ahead and open the DS utils go into add-ons in your files take the uh, texture PBO whatever you labeled it and drag it into the white box now if it doesn't have a line here saying private key of anything you're gonna have to create one uh, to create one go ahead and click on N and it will create a new key for you. 
um, but you have to put in the authority name. So for this one, I'm just going to use derps texture set and destination path. I'm going to go ahead and put that to what my normal directory is for daisy tools, which is my daisy projects folder, which if you don't remember, is this folder here c users documents daisy projects which inside of daisy projects i have a master keys folder that i personally made it doesn't automatically make this and if you go into the master keys folder it will save the destination path there use the use this authority to sign files and it should automatically be set to destination path, authority name, create key. Make sure to protect your key. Only public keys can be distributed with your content to public. Click OK. Now it should put the private key to whatever you named yours, derps texture set dot bi private key. Stands for Bohemia Interactive private key. So now if you have your PBO in here and click process, click yes, inside of your add-ons folder, it should have signed the file. Should have now a BI sign file here. Now in here, you can copy this or open this and copy this directory. Now exit out of it and exit out of DS utils. The reason that you copied it is so that you can grab that key to put the public key with it like it's supposed to be. I'm going to go ahead and open another window of my P drive and simply paste that in to go to that directly and quickly. So I named mine derps textures. So let me see derps textures dot bi private key and bi key. BI private key is what it signs it with. The BI key is what's get or what gets put with the mod when it's put onto the workshop. This is the public key so that other servers can use it. So you're going to control C on the uh, whatever you labeled it dot by key. Come over to your keys folder that you made a little bit ago. Control V to paste it in here and it should be there. Now that key makes it so that when this mod is put onto the workshop and a server was to load it, that key is connected to the by sign file, which allows the derps textures to be read on the server itself as a standalone mod. So without the by key in the keys folder, if it was signed, it wouldn't let people connect because it's not approved on the server. Technically, there's no key there allowing people to connect with the mod, with the content, etc. Anyway, at this point, you've tested it, you've created your key, you've got everything done, it's sitting inside of your P drive where it should be with no AND symbol, with everything inside of it, add-ons, are the uh, PBO is signed, you've got your key in there. So real quick, just to go over this just lastly, if you ever wanted to open it up and edit anything that's in it, right click on it and extract to derps textures will extract it to its own folder. If you edit anything inside of this and add anything to it, ever edit any of it, you have to delete these two folders or these the, the original PBO that you extracted as well as the key. Delete them both, right click and delete. And then if you repack, PB, or repack your file with PBO manager, you'll have your PBO again you'll have to re-sign it by going into DSUtils, dragging it into here. If that's the last thing that you signed, you won't have to change this. It'll automatically be set and you just click process and it will sign it again with the same key. Because anytime you change anything, you have to re-sign it for it to register the updated content. Otherwise, with the same old key, if you do repack it, it won't register the updated content because it's an old key. It's not signed with the current updated file set. Anyway, 
because we're not doing anything with that, we're just going to delete the folder itself. Should be left with what's here. Now, if you go into the publisher, you'll be met with new workshop item. Now you can label this whatever you want. Um, realistically, I I would recommend just naming it what it is. Name it your name, textured set, whatever you want to call it. Um, change tags, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, for this, it's generally it's just uh, equipment. And I mean, if you retext your weapons, that's that's about it. Um, now mod content, you're gonna click it, and you're going to go to your P drive, and you're going to direct it to the folder that you made. So for this tutorial, it's Derp's texture set or retexture set. Select folder. Signatures. It should say that they are all signed. Description whatever you want it to be change note initial upload now realistically if you don't want people to sign anything or take any of your content it's just a texture realistically they if you don't sign it with other tools that obfuscate the file set anybody can open it it's always going to be an issue Anybody can always try to steal anything that they want to, which is where DMCAing people on the Steam Workshop comes in. If you don't want people taking your stuff, simply put that in the description. Permission is not granted to repack, etc. Um, please get a hold of me if you want to repack or use this on your server or just use it as a standalone mod. However you decide to word it is entirely up to you. Um, so now go ahead and click the I agree and click the publish. If you really wanted to, you can upload a photo with it. You just click browse and throw a photo with it for the workshop photo page or page photo, the whatever. Um, once it's uploaded, you will have to push a second update for it. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to do anything. So what you would have to do is after you're done with the initial upload, exit out of Daisy Publisher, reopen it, you would select the mod on the left hand side here, select the mod content, click it, click it, click select, and then you would put in the change note, meta push update, and then you would click I agree and publish it a second time immediately after the first push. If you don't do this, the meta.cpp file or the meta file that's generated with the mod will not be there. It's required on a server for the server to read the mod properly for people to connect or however it decides to or however that works exactly. I'm not 100% sure as I'm not a daisy master. All I know is that if you don't have the meta file there it won't be read properly and it'll have issues with players connecting and shit like that. So, or either that or it won't read the file properly and you just won't have the content. I can't remember what it was exactly, but yeah, just push the meta file. It's an immediate update directly after it or after the initial upload. That's all you got to do. Uh, and after that, your files can then be put onto any server publicly. So, yeah, um, that about sums it up. If you've got any questions, be sure to drop some comments on the video below. Uh, if you guys know me in Discord, be sure to get a hold of me if there's anything that I left out. I can try to post a second video eventually. I know that this one was kind of long, and this is my first YouTube video officially. But I hope that it does help some people out. I get asked these on a daily. How do you retexture something? Uh, how, how do you set up the config file for it? I've already taught a couple of people how to do some of this, but... This, this is generally it for simple retexturing of things in DayZ. What I provided was a hoodie. If there's anything else in DayZ that you're wanting to retexture that's a, a default DayZ item, realistically, it's the same general process for everything. But when you're in the config file, you just have to make sure that all of the paths and directories are correct. Other than that, in your DayZ folder, in the add-ons of just standalone generic DayZ, you'll have all of these other PBOs that you can technically edit the same way by going in, taking one of the uh, textures, converting it, 
changing it up, setting up another config file in your custom mod pack the way that we just did with the hoodie, but all of the paths and the classes and everything, it all has to be set up just the way that we did this. So I hope that this tutorial has helped some people. I know that it doesn't go over everything. I might do some other stuff eventually. Just keep in mind that if an item is P3D locked, you won't be able to retexture it. If it's not, for the most part, generally, you can. So, if you like the video, be sure to drop a like and a subscribe. Um, be sure to keep that bell notifications on in case I do post any future content. So, anyways, thanks y'all, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in.